Okay, so this is the most current research that I saw is that the microbes actually, when we eat, they send a signal to the liver and they coordinate with the liver through the, the hepatic or yeah, the hepatic portal vein. This uh -huh. was the one that I recently, like literally two weeks ago, I looked this up. I'm like, this is it. Um, and it tells the liver how to regulate blood glucose. sugar. Yeah, li the liver is the, you know, the conductor of your right. glucose levels. But it's the microbes. That's really interesting. In the gut that That's are telling the liver. That's super interesting. So if you feed those microbes yeah. something that makes them happy, that first meal, in that first meal, mm -hmm. you've now got a better shot at stabilizing blood sugar, which is why I think the apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. works so well, because you gave the microbes the fuel they want. Yeah, fermented foods, acetic acid, it's so good. It's not just the microbes, though, because even in your stomach, there's already some responses that start and that tell your brain to, you know, tell your pancreas to release insulin, that, you know, yeah. uh, align all of your hunger hormones. But it's so interesting that the microbes are actually part of this equation as well. I mean, it makes so much sense. It makes, it makes so much sense, yeah. which then leads me, of course, my brain goes to women mm -hmm. and I'm like, OK, so women that have been on birth control yeah. for like decades mm -hmm. uh, on. I, I sat with so many women who have been on like 10, 20, 30 rounds of antibiotics mm -hmm. and their microbes are completely decimated and they are weight loss resistant yeah. and they can't bring back the balance back into their body because of the destruction of the microbes. So from your perspective, mm -hmm. when I dove into your work, I was like, oh, she, she's got the microbe thing down. Yeah, absolutely. Because another thing I talk about a lot is fiber, right? Okay, great. Having fiber at the beginning of a meal, not only does it create this really wonderful mesh on your intestinal wall yep. to prevent, first of all, leaky gut, but also to prevent glucose molecules from arriving too quickly into your bloodstream. Right. And then the fiber is also, you know, your microbes' favorite food. Right. So it's all kind of connected. And what I love about the lens of the glucose hacks is that when you focus on them, so many other things fall into place. Yep. Glucose is not everything, of course. And you know that. I know that. It's not the end all be all. It's the main thing, though. It's the main thing. It's it's For me, it's the main window through which to enter really in a, in a beautiful helpful healing way mm -hmm. your food habits yep. you see so the the fiber hack is the following i explained that when you're going to have a lunch or a dinner or by the way it can also be a, a break fast meal whatever mm -hmm. time that is it's always very helpful to start with vegetables because mm -hmm. vegetables contain fiber mm -hmm. and when you have fiber at the beginning of a meal this is very important at the beginning of the meal the fiber in the veggies has time to coat your intestinal wall and make mm. this really protective mesh that then slows down any glucose molecules coming down later from pasta or cookies or whatever during the meal to make their way into your bloodstream too quickly. And also it impacts your microbiome in this mm. really beneficial way. So if you're fasting for a long time, actually, yes, your meal should be savory. But mm. if you can, on top of that, have your first mouthfuls be vegetables fiber, with fiber. Yeah. It's going to be, I mean, the rewards on your blood sugar are tremendous, right? And you're going to extend the benefits of that fasting for so much longer if you do this. Yeah, and, and a thousand percent agree. And that is one thing that I really have been trying to emphasize is this metabolic sh switch. Yeah. That what I, what, and this is why our work is so beautiful together, mm -hmm. because what I feel like I really tried to do is teach people like, let's come on over here and just take some breaks. Like, <laughs> We just need to pause. just like give her a break, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. She needs to rest, girl. Exactly. Mama needs some time. <laughs> like yeah. Your whole metabolic system has just been messed up from this horrible food system that has kept you addicted, mm -hmm. has got you filled with all these obesogens. Let's just give it a break, and then people got they got a result. But then this cha challenge that I had was getting them to go back into food yeah. because every time they went back into food, all of a sudden their blood sugar started to go too high and they started to gain weight. Mm -hmm. So. With that idea in mind, if I'm putting a meal together, yeah. you just talked about fiber first. Uh -huh. Give me just like, here's what you should have learned the day you were born. <laughs> well, you should have learned that, you know, these sort of old school cultural habits that we have a lot in Europe of starting your meal with vegetables. Mm. So in France, we have crudité, which means raw veggies at the beginning of a meal. And when I arrived in, in your studio, you had this beautiful plate uh, mm. on the kitchen and there were some raw veggies there. And, and in Italy, for example, they have antipasti, which mm. is um, usually roasted veggies at the beginning of a meal. In the Middle East, they start their meals with uh, herbs by the bunch. We need to go back to these cultural traditions mm -hmm. and we need to start our meals, meals with a plate of vegetables. Now, this doesn't have to be complicated. It mm -hmm. can be, even if you don't have time, just grab two baby carrots from the fridge or three cherry mm -hmm. tomatoes. If you have time, maybe, you know, 
Cook some green beans, roast some cauliflower. You can put some little sauce on there. Start your meals with vegetables. Mm, This will then dampen any glucose spike coming down afterwards from the rest of your regular meal. And if you do nothing else, if the savory breakfast sounds too complicated, if you do nothing else, at your next dinner, just add a plate of veggies to the beginning of your meal and then eat what you normally would eat, Mm -hmm. right? Don't change the rest of the meal. Mm -hmm. Just test this. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you will reduce the spike of your regular dinner and you'll Mm -hmm. feel better. Better energy, fewer cravings, less hunger, less brain fog, less impact on your hormones, less impact on your sleep quality. Mm -hmm. And then slowly this virtuous cycle kind of puts itself into place and you're actually eating more than usual, Mm -hmm. but you're also craving less sugar and less junk food. And it's just, it's like a wedge. You just put it in, paf, Mm -hmm. and then you open this world of steadier blood sugar levels Mm -hmm. and feeling so much more like yourself. Mm. Oh, I love that. And you know where my brain goes yeah, to? Just, just from like sitting with so many people, this is literally what I think somebody would say or listening would say, well, what if I don't like veggies? Mm. I think you can find recipes that you like. Try a broccoli soup, you know, with mm. some cream in there. Mm. Try some roasted cauliflower with some tahini and Parmesan. Like, come on. There's Come on. And I got try. a ton of, of recipes yes, to you help do. you. Yep. And listen, if you don't like veggies and you don't want to try this, that's totally your prerogative. Mm-hmm. But I believe there's something in there for everybody. Mm-hmm. I think most of us maybe have this idea that veggies are gross, you know, like the really mm. bitter um, what Brussels sprouts or really bitter zucchini just boiled in some water. Yeah, of course, veggies can be gross, but veggies can also be really damn mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. So you just have to put a little bit of work in and yeah. see what works for you. And, and I have a belief that yeah. your microbes, we're back at the microbes. I'm a little mildly obsessed with the microbes right now. It seems like it's, yeah. <laughs> no, because I think they're, they're like the forgotten hero. But they tell you what you want to eat actually. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. The, when I first started studying fasting, there was a, a beautiful book that came out called The Every Other Day Diet. Okay. Have you ever? No. Ever, okay. And this is what they, this woman did. She was a researcher. She took a group of people that had high cholesterol, had Mm -hmm. extra weight, high blood pressure, all the horrible metabolic markers. And she said, you eat whatever you want every other day. Mm. But on the days that you're not eating, you're fasting. And so they took this group. Right. I know. Can you imagine taking like the standard American diet person through that experiment? She did lose uh, like about 15 to 20 percent of the of the of the grip. Can I be honest? That sounds horrible. That sounds like the worst thing to do. Do you know that a lot of people fast that way? Really? To this day. But that's unfortunate because I think if you do that, you're not actually feeding your body good food. You're Okay, but this is the part that was magic. Tell me. Is that at the end of a year, what ended up happening is everybody lost weight, everybody's cholesterol improved, mm. every, all the metabolic markers were better, but the biggest shocker real was their taste buds, buds changed. Good. And so they started making smarter choices. That's great. And so this is why I'm such a fan of feeding your microbes is Mm. because they control your taste buds. Completely. So if you take somebody who has a massive sugar addiction, Mm -hmm. and in your experience, you start giving them fiber at the front of every meal, feeding those microbes, what have you seen as far as their cravings in, in what period of time? Well... In a few days, the cravings for the chocolate bar at 4 p.m. dissipate. And I'm sure there's a microbe angle, but also what I know is that there's a big glucose angle in the sense that if you reduce glucose... Look, so every time you eat too many carbs or sugars, yeah. you experience a big blood sugar spike and then a drop. And that drop has been shown to activate Ooh, yeah. this craving center in your brain, telling yeah. you like, Mindy, eat some ice cream. Eat some yeah, ice cream. I've and you can't before. resist that chocolate. voice. It's usually chocolate. Chocolate, okay. Those microbes. And that it. is the craving center in your brain telling you to find something sweet because your blood sugar levels are low. Now, there's surely another microbiome path as well to this that I don't know much about yet, but I want to look more into this. And so you have all these different pathways activating where unsteady blood sugar levels and eating too many processed carbs are just going to increase your cravings. Yep. And then there's the dopamine, right? Yes. So. And then you're tired because your mitochondria are exhausted from all the glucose spikes. And so you're just like, oh, you feel so lethargic. So you yep. want some dopamine. You want more. So what I see is just by adding, for example, a veggie starter or having a savory breakfast instead of a sweet mm-hmm. one, you act so profoundly on that glucose spike. Mm-hmm. The glucose spike reduces, the glucose crash reduces. So the activation of your craving center in your brain is just not happening as much anymore. Brilliant. So if you want to eat chocolate, you're doing it from a place of enjoyment and pleasure, yeah. not a place of like, 
I need something sweet right now. Like yep. anything, give me a chocolate bar. You know that feeling? Yep. It's yep. a very different world to yep. be in that feeling versus oh, yeah. to be in the feeling of, hey, you know what? I think tomorrow I'm going to go get my favorite chocolate cake at this bakery. Yes. And you're having fun and you're enjoying it and you're yeah. looking forward to it, but you're not not a victim. You're not controlled yeah. by the urge. It's, and that's what happens when you steady your glucose levels. It's like an empty hole is what I've yeah. noticed. Like people are just eating. And you know, even in the research that I've seen, that dopamine in people that are more obese, mm. they actually don't get the same enjoyment out of their food mm. that their dopamine, because they're just so dopamine saturated. Yeah. And, and how I discovered that was looking at the 48 hour fast, uh -huh which is a dopamine reset because what I, the research shows is that all of a sudden these new dopamine receptor Receptors. sites open up. That's fascinating. And I found that through the lens of looking at the research on people who are obese. Mm. And it honestly gave me a whole new level of compassion for the person who struggles to lose weight because they are not getting the same dopamine hit. They're not filling up. And so they're just eating and eating and eating, trying to help themselves feel normal like For they did sure. years ago. This idea that if you're fat, you're lazy is such bullshit. It's I mean, total bullshit. everybody wants to be healthy and yeah. feel good. Nobody's doing this on purpose, feeling like, oh, I want to fuck up my body. We are all just sort of victims to our physiology, what's yeah. going on, our dopamine, our microbes, yeah. our glucose spikes, glucose crashes. We're out of control. Right, Agreed. but everybody wants to feel good, and then you add to that all these marketing messages. Hey, this product has no sugar added, or this product is vegan. You know, and you're like, oh, that must mean it's good for me. Yep. Actually, it's full of processed sugar and processed carbs, and it's making you sicker. Yep. So we are kind of in a situation where people are locked into this place of I want to feel better, but everything around me is giving me bad information, and I'm just feeling worse and worse yes. and worse. Yes. Which is why going back to physiology and the biochemistry of your body and kind of common sense, like the stuff I talk about, it's common sense. It's super common. It's sense. super common sense. But now we have the science to understand why it's so good. Yes. Yeah. And then I want everybody to go back to this common sense stuff. Yeah. But it's a lot like the work that I'm doing where what I hear, and I'm sure you hear this all the time from people, they go, God, that just makes sense. Yeah. And I think we've just so overcomplicated food. So, and we've just taken all the power away from the person. For sure.